I'm excited this morning because we got a message from Pastor Phil Pringle, who is our founding pastor. Uh, pastor Phil Pringle started uh, C3 Church, the very first one in Sydney, Australia in 1980. And now uh, in 2019, I believe we have something like 670 churches around the world. And uh, he is the, um, still the apostolic overseer of the, the movement. And we, you know, we voluntarily join that and we're members of the C3 Church. And so every couple of months, he sends a message out, uh, and that's a brand new thing for 2019, sends a message out to the movement and says, hey, if you would, here's 10 minutes of message. I just want to inspire you with some culture and, and give you um, some, some vision for what I see for our church. And so this morning, I want to play that for you. And I want you to receive it with the understanding that God is able He'll preach for about 10 minutes and then the video will go down and I'll, I'll preach for a few minutes more and then we'll have some ministry time. But what I want you to understand today is that God is exactly who he says that he is. You know, there's this, there's this scripture that says, he who has ears, let him hear. And Lisa, that's either the worst scripture in all of the Bible or one of the best ones. And when you, when you think that way, you always look for the best ones. And Jesus tells this to people all over his ministry life. He says, he who has ears, let him hear. It doesn't make any sense in a logical way because we know that everyone who has ears can hear, but we have to step beyond simply hearing the words and begin to process the meaning behind what God's trying to say to us in our lives. I believe with all that I have that God is not only able but he's willing to do far above everything we could ever ask or imagine. And if we had any idea, I know for me 10 years ago, if I had any idea what he had planned for me today, I would have run the other way probably. But that's why God gives it to you in small doses. Because he believes, he believes in you more than you could ever believe in yourself. And he wants more for you than you could ever want for yourself. So as we preach today, as we teach today, I just want to raise the level of your expectation. I want to raise your eyes up because I believe God has more for you today than you ever imagined possible. And today, I want you to get a taste of that. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Let's open up our hearts. Let's open up our spirits today to receive what he wants to say to us so we can have an understanding of an expectation that he has for every single one of us. Guys, if you play that video, here's Pastor Phil Pringle in Sydney, Australia. Hi, everyone. Woo. Pastor Phil and Chris Pringle. Hi, guys. It's wonderful, wonderful to be sharing this message with you today. Welcome to church this weekend. Yes. What a delight to have you in the house of God. Yes. Many guests, we're so glad you made it. We're so yes. glad you're here and looking forward to sharing the Word of God with you. Chris? Yes, well, look, I am excited that I'm here to introduce my husband. This is an amazing message of prophecy and inspiration to release something absolutely new in the midst of you and all our churches. So I know you're going to love this message today. As so we, God bless you. As yeah. we come into Presence Conference oh! in San Diego. Yes, C3 America. In August. Do whatever you can to be there. It's going to be absolutely yes. amazing. Yes, for a real big hug. Not a virtual one like this one, but a real one. So God bless you. Amen. See you there. Well, I, I wanted to share about this uh, amazing gift that God has given to us called prophecy. And it may seem like a small subject, but actually it embraces a vast array of the moving of the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit first fell on those 120 disciples, Peter stood up and he said, when the Spirit of God falls, young men will see visions, and old men will dream dreams, and handmaidens and servants will prophesy. Actually, the dreaming of dreams and the seeing of visions and prophesying are pretty much all the same thing. And I have no doubt that we are moving into an era a brand new phase, an incredibly higher level and a higher season of anointing and outpouring of the Holy Spirit than we've ever seen in the history of the world. In C3 and right across the earth, right across all flesh and all the church right around the world, we're going to see a move of God that is completely unstoppable. The moving of the Spirit always brings about proclamations or prophecies. Immediately when they were filled with the Spirit, they all began to speak in other languages that they never learned before. And then the apostles stood up and started preaching, especially Peter. And he prophesied about the wonders of God and the glory of God. 
and he magnified God in his preaching. He was worshiping God with his preaching and speaking in a way that is supernatural throughout all of Scripture is called prophesying. In fact, right from the Old Testament, Moses, when he looked back through time, it was an, an element of prophesying. He was seeing in the Spirit how the world was created. Right through to the book of John and the book of Revelation written by the Apostle John, he was seeing into the future. And that was also the gift of prophecy. In fact, Jesus, when he was here, he said, I only do what I see my Father doing. Now, when the word prophecy originally comes into Scripture, it means to bubble up, to be like a fountain within. And you'll find that when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, things will come out of your mouth. Worship, praise, glorifying God, speaking in new languages, supernatural utterances begin to happen. But that word morphed into a new word as well, which meant seer. And that word meant that you could actually begin to see what God was doing and then speak it into being. Inside us, when we're born again, we get a duplicate set of faculties. We get spiritual ears, spiritual eyes, spiritual feelings, spiritual taste, spiritual smell. We can sense God. When we dominate our world with stimulus to the flesh man, to our body, we shut down that spirit man. But when we quieten down our flesh and, and not let it have so much stimulation, we actually awaken those sensibilities and those faculties that belong to the inner man. One of the reasons we close our eyes when we pray is to shut out all that imaging that's coming from the natural world and the inner eye, our inner eyes are opened and we can start to see God and reach out into the spirit. In fact, Paul in Ephesians 3 verse 20, he prays for the Ephesian church. He says, I pray that the eyes of your heart are opened. I pray that you get it. That's what really he was asking. The, pr the, the prayer was that the, the inner eye, the inner vision that God wanted to show them would become apparent. God wants to mingle his thoughts with our imagination. And we should never underestimate the power of imagination in terms of waiting on God. Because once we have started to perceive something and conceive it in our mind, we can then speak it. And many times Jesus told us, rather than just say it and pray it, he wants us to prophesy it into being. He'd say, speak to the mountain and it will move. Most often Jesus would speak to sickness and he'd say, be healed to a person. He would tell people to do things and they would act on that word and they would find themselves in a new level of victory and healing. And that is what I believe God has taken us into as we move into the future. There is a new anointing. There is a fresh oil coming upon C3. Part of that is not just praying, but it is proclaiming. It is prophesying. And I am prophesying that we will see a million people worshiping in our congregations all around the world in the next few years. I am prophesying that we will see a revival and a move of God and an outpouring of the Spirit like we have never seen before. I am prophesying that we are going to see the sick healed, the dead raised. We're going to see blind eyes opened. We're going to see thousands and thousands and thousands of teenagers coming to Christ. A massive revival is going to be poured out on the holy on the people of God all over the world and we're going to find that every church will experience an influx of teenagers the touch of God will not be stopped in this era the devil can't stop it people can't stop it governments won't stop it the Holy Spirit is coming on earth like a wave that is unstoppable and I prophesy that your churches your churches your people your teenagers your youth your teams are are all going to experience the touch and the power of the Holy Ghost at another level so that you start to see the future and that you start to prophesy those things that God is about to do. We're living in an age when God wants to move in our hearts 
us, not just move sovereignly from above. Sometimes we are asking God to do things that He wants us to do, and He has told us to do. He has said, you go heal the sick, and we go pray, God, heal the sick person. We are the ones with the Word of the Lord in our mouth, and we can say to this world, be healed in Jesus' name. We can say to the dead, come alive in Jesus' name. We can say to the sick, be healed. We can say to people who are suffering, and they're in poverty, and they're in difficulty, to marriages that are in trouble, to people who are suicidal. We can bring the Word of God and bring life. The most important thing for me about prophecy is that I believe it's a lifesaver. We live in a world where young people, middle-aged people, older people are struggling to grasp hope. They're struggling to see a future. They're struggling to feel like something good is going to happen to them. And I believe we're living in an hour now where every time people come into church, something good is going to happen to them because we prophesied it, because we said it. We need to clothe our congregations with faith. We need to clothe our lives with faith in the morning to speak over our lives that I am blessed. I am uh, uh, holy. I am on fire. I have energy. I am awake. Uh, I love God. I love church. I love the people of God. I'm destined for grace greatness, when you start to see these things in your life and you speak them, you will find you transform into the very words that are coming out of your mouth. Never underestimate the power of your tongue. You can create life or bring death with that. You can actually penetrate into heaven with the Word of God in your lips, with the high praises of God in our mouth and a two-edged sword in our hand. We bring defeat to the devil and we access heaven. God has given us His Word to use. It isn't just to study. It isn't just to memorize. It isn't just to meditate on. It isn't just to teach. It is to use as a weapon. It is to use as a powerful weapon that defeats the devil, cuts him in pieces, and brings down strongholds. It's also an incredible weapon in terms of coming against our own flesh, coming against all the persecution and criticisms. As you speak that word, you are speaking the very same word that created the heavens and the earth. It has got power in it. The living word of God has so much power that it created a universe, for goodness sake. When we put His Word in our mouth, like God said to Jeremiah, I put my Word in your mouth. Once that begins to happen and we prophesy, we'll see valleys of dry bones come alive. We will see dead men coming out of their tombs. We will see whole communities transformed, con converted by the power of Christ, and our churches set on fire with revival. In the prayer meeting, and I'm telling you, there is a revival in our prayer meetings. God is bringing great amounts of prayer into our lives and into our churches. We shouldn't be just praying. We should be prophesying that God is about to move in our own lives, in our families, in our finances, in our circumstances, in our communities with salvation, with blessing, with an abundance in Jesus' name. I'm praying for you right now that the power of the Holy Ghost will fall upon you, your congregation, your families, and you'll experience abundance in Jesus' mighty name. Heavenly Father, let the blessing and the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost rest on all of our congregations all around the world in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Fantastic. All right, so I want you to hear this today because this message isn't for the church. This message is for you. This idea of God moving in the world, God, revival coming into this place isn't so much about the, the, the building and the facility and the organization. This idea is about you. And, and if revival is going to come to this church, it's going to come to your seat first. It, it begins with the, the Spirit of God that was placed on the inside of you. Pastor Phil was a postman in New Zealand. Eric, no one lives in New Zealand. They have more sheep than people. But God gave him a vision. Yeah. And now we have 670 churches around the world. Yeah. If God can do that with a postman in the countryside of New Zealand, imagine what he can do with you. Imagine what he can do in your world once you open your Bible and you sit down and you say, yes, God, have your way in my life. 
All I want you to do today is, is get out of your normal, get out of your ordinary, and begin to lift your eyes to extraordinary. Begin to lift your eyes beyond what you see and what you think, and to begin to believe that God is who he says that he is. He's either real or he's not. And if he's not, I don't know what we're doing. But, but 20 years ago, my life got radically changed. And, and he touched me in a way that I, I just can't explain. And, and I've seen him faithful, 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 faithful. It doesn't always go the way I think it's going to go, but I'm convinced that he's exactly who he is. And so if he is who he says that he is, just listen to me, okay? He who has ears, let him hear. If, if he is who he says that he is, and he says that you are, and that I am, his masterpiece that he desires to use to bring hope to the world, that I need to stop thinking that I know what he's doing. And I need to start imagining that it's bigger than I ever thought it could be. And I need to believe that he's able, if he's able to with a word, like Pastor Phil said, speak all of the stars into the sky. With a word, separate the land from the sea. With a word. What isn't he able to do in my life? If with the words come, Peter, he can, with, I can't explain it. The thing about God is there's always, there's always going to be a gap of mystery. Yeah. There's always going to be a level of I don't know how. There's, it, it, we call it faith. And, and it's impossible to please God without faith. That's what the Bible says. So Peter has to go, I've never seen anybody walk on the water before but God. And I have to in my life. He's, he's not going to call me out on the water, I don't think. He's going to do something new in me. But in that moment where I go, can a postman from New Zealand really lead this thing with 670 people? I've got to go, but God can do more than I ever could imagine he could. And listen, this idea of prophecy, it's, this, it's wacky to me. I grew up Methodist. We didn't talk about that, Crystal. Like, we kicked people out of church for that, if they mentioned that word. Tongues, prophecy, all those promises. We're like, no, 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 that's not for here. You go down to the crazy church down the street where they have sequin vests and tambourines. <laughs> but but when, I, when, I, when I got my life transformed by the power of God, and I began to read the Bible for myself, what I saw was there was an extraordinary after extraordinary after extraordinary promise that God said was available to me that so many people told me wasn't. But God said that it was. And so I made, a, I made a determination in my life when I heard that for the first time, I made a determination in my life that I was gonna seek after that. And this idea of prophecy, it's not like Old Testament prophecy where there's this man in, 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 you know, in crazy clothes and, and, a, and a rope belt and eating locusts that's gonna go, hey guys, the kingdom of heaven is near, repent. But it's this gift of God on the inside of you that allows you to do exactly what he said you should do. He's simply saying, listen, I'm calling you to this thing. It's, Barbara, it's crazy. You're gonna say, he's not talking to me today. There's no way I can do that. And God's going, no, no, I know I'm talking to you and I know there's no way you can do it. And that's why you have to hear what's next. God's calling you to bring hope and faith and love to the whole world. It doesn't, take, it doesn't take the Bible for me to tell you that, that most of your friends are probably on antidepressants. That most of your friends ha have, have deep bouts of depression every single year, if not every single month. That, that the world, even though on the external, on your Instagram feed, they're happy, on, on the backside of that, they're struggling and they're posting those extra positive things because on the inside, they're just reaching for, they're grasping for whatever they can find. Suicide rates in America are climbing and climbing and climbing, and we're praying God. But like Pastor Phil said, we're praying God, and God's saying, yeah, I'm sending you. God, bring hope into their life. I brought you into their life. God, we want, we want, we want you back in our schools. Then send your kids to public school, because that's, that's, that's where the hope is. 
Let's not take ourselves out of the world. Let's step into a world who has no other place to find hope. And let's be that hope. I'm going to read you my scripture. I'm going to talk about scripture. Cindy, I'm going to say scripture because I'm not going to just preach what I think. Because what I think doesn't make any difference. It's, it's about what the word of God says. What God told us about the life he's calling us to live. And in 1 Corinthians 13, if you've ever been to a wedding in your life, it's the great love chapter. You know, love never fails. Love, love's amazing. Doesn't matter how messy he is. It doesn't matter how, how me, hangry he gets. It doesn't matter any of that stuff, Lisa. Because you love him, you're going you're gonna to hang out with him, right? That, that's, that's what 1 Corinthians 13 says. And then, and then and you have to know that this is Paul's letter to the Corinthian church, and he didn't put chapter numbers. He didn't put verse numbers. We did that later so we could study it. He's just writing a letter. So after he gets done telling us in all of literature, probably the best exposition of what love is, he, he, he begins a new subject, and he says this in 1 Corinthians 14. Just told us that in the, in the best way with words that's ever been spoken, what love is. And then he says, let love be your highest goal, the Apostle Paul says. He says, but you should also desire the special abilities the Spirit gives especially the ability to prophesy. Hold on right there. Because this is what happens. You have to see the connection here. You know, the Bible says that the, the most important two commandments are this. It's, it's love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. And it, it says it this way, two different ways. It says, love the Lord your God. And the second is equally as important, love your neighbor. In, in another translation, it says, love the Lord your God and the second is like it, love, the neighbor, love your neighbor as yourself. Here's the thing. The way you love God at least, at least half of it is loving your neighbor as yourself. Right. The, the, the way to accomplish the first commandment is to obey the second commandment. Yeah. Because the Bible says that he who, who says he loves God and, and, and ignores his brother is, is, is deceived. You, you, can't, you can't love God and hate your neighbor. The way to love God is to love his children. You know, if, if, you, if you love, if you come to me and say, Pastor Jeff, we just love you. Man, we've been here for a couple of years, and we just want you to know we love you. But that wife of yours is a real boop. We can't stand her. We don't want her here anymore. We, we sit as far away as we can from her. And, you know, she's just, she's not pleasant to be around. We don't appreciate the, the messages she preach. We, we don't think she's a good mom. We don't, our friendship isn't going to make it much farther. You know, we're, we're about, because you can't, you can't. You can't hate my wife and love me because we're, we're one. Like you, you have to love my family if you want to. Now you don't have to agree with everything we do and you don't have to like us all the time because love isn't like, it's different. Love transcends like. But, but, but if you want to love me, you have to love her. If you, if you want to love God, you have to love his family. And, and the thing is, is God's telling you, if you want to love me, you've got to begin to extend your, and, and Jesus' love extended him to the cross. So you think, well, it's not convenient for me. to. Well, it wasn't convenient for him either. But we've got to love the world around us, even though they continue to bash us and batter us and come against us, to tell us that we're wrong and we're deceived and that we're liars. We have to continue to step forward. That's what makes us different. Yeah. If we don't do that, we're not different at all. So it says here in 1 Corinthians 14, it says, here's love. So here's the thing. It, you need, love needs to be your goal, but in, in, in trying to love everyone, you should desire these gifts this, the Spirit gives, especially the ability to prophesy. That's really important. Next verse. For if you have the ability to speak in tongues, the charismatic, spirit-filled church loves speaking in tongues, you'll be only talking to God, and people won't be able to understand you. You'll be speaking by the power of the Spirit, but it'll be all mysterious. The one who prophesies, now we think these spiritual terms, we think big and, and I can't grab, put my head around, but let, let's just see. The one who prophesies strengthens others, encourages them, and comforts them. If I, if I step back and take a breath, stop thinking about all my preconceived ideas, about all the, all the things that I put on God that he actually isn't, and I just read the word for itself, it says, if I, if I prophesy, I do three things. I strengthen others. I encourage them, and I comfort them. Next scripture. Next verse. A person who speaks in tongues is strengthened personally, but the one who speaks a word of prophecy strengthens the entire church. And so I want to encourage you to, you know, this, this works in the world, let alone in the spirit. 
Like this works, this is just the power of positive thinking, but the thing is that the things in the world are often a reflection of the things of the Spirit. We, we take the things of God and we, we cut Him off and we take it for ourselves and then we call them good psychology or good, good, uh, good best practices. And so we'll, we'll understand that our, our, our design is to work this way. And, and, and Jesse Schwartz, one of our youth directors, preached a message about this last week. So if I encourage David and Laurel today, because they're in church every week and they're always sitting right there, so I know exactly where they are. And I say, David and Laurel, you guys are awesome. Something happens between my mouth and their brain that causes their, listen, this is, this is crazy, that causes their body to physically respond to my words. When I speak to them, their brains activate. Like, they're like Alexa. No, if I say Alexa, she, whoop, she gets a little circle on top. Whoop. If I say David and Laurel, whoop, their brains activate. You guys are awesome. And there's a little connection that happens. You can, did you know that you can actually rewire your brain? And you know, one of my favorite people in the church is Joel Link. And Joel, he missed the first part of my message over there. Joel encourages me every single time I see him. And, and it's, it's gotten so normal that when I come to church and I see Joel, he doesn't have to speak to me, John. I just feel encouraged. Because yeah. my brain has rewired, he's rewired my brain. Joel Link is in my brain. But this is how God created us to work. That even without the Holy Spirit, when people begin to speak, that's why it's really important you're in good environments. It's really important. You know, I, I've got friends that are sarcastic. Don't hang out with sarcastic people. No, no, I'm serious. Sarcasm, the, the, the Bible says in Proverbs 18, it says, death and life is in the power of the tongue. And, and people think, oh, I'm just going to do little digs at you, digs at you, digs at you, digs at you. And it's funny. I'm telling you, it's killing you. Yeah. It's, like, it's like taking a little bit of poison every time they speak to you. You don't have to cut yourself off, but you have to come against that. And you have to say, listen, I'm just going to keep speaking life to them, keep speaking life to them, and I'm going to receive all of their discouragements. Because it's... It, it's what the world thinks is fun, but I'm telling you, your brain wires it. Yeah. You know, children who are, who are treated poorly grow up with low self-esteem. Why? Because their brains are wired with discouragement. Their brains are wired to believe they're not good enough. Their brains are wired to believe they're not smart enough. But we know, we know from just not even spiritual things, just studying people, that if we'll change the way we speak, it actually raises the bar for their life. It's crazy. You know, I, 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 I've got a dog, and if you come anywhere near my house, Dion, Joe, if you come near my house, my dog will just go crazy. Like, we're just watching TV, we're hanging out, we're having a good night, and my dog is completely asleep and probably snoring. But if you come within 20 feet of my house, 20 yards, actually, it, it, any visual line of sight probably, or, or, or you know, he's like an, in, you can, he can stomp on the ground. He just immediately, and just almost pounds himself against the door. It's crazy. He only has one word. He, he has, woo. <laughs> so you go anywhere near my door, he's like, woo, 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 woo. what he's trying to say is, people, 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 dad, people, 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 people. You need to know there's people, 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 people. <laughs> and I get it. He's effectively communicating every time. I'm not paying attention. He's a loud dog. I'm not paying attention to anything else. He has completely rewired my brain. As soon as he starts that, I know there's people out there. But, but you, you, are, you are not a dog. You, you've been given something that no other animal has been given. You've been given a unique voice that can actually, your brain can actually accentuate language. And, and what you can speak to people is far more specific, far more uh, unique than, than, one, than one depth of bark. And, and using that voice that God has given you, you can speak strength and comfort and encouragement to the people around you. And you can actually begin to rewire their brains. And in doing so, you start raising their expectations. You can rewire their brain. It says death and life from the power of the tongue. So I can speak negatively, or Joel can, every, every service when he's out on the, with his high team shirt, he can be like, Jeff, that was not a good message. Bruh, you need to get better next week because I'm not, I'm not hanging much longer with these crappy messages. <laughs> hey, Jeff, I, I saw you on stage today. I need a little more energy out of you every morning because this is getting pretty like, oh, I, I fell asleep today. 
And if he starts doing that every week, what am I going to do? I'm going to see Joel. I'm going to immediately feel discouraged before he talks to me. What am I going to do? Go the other way, right? Because I can, he, he can rewire my brain where, I be, where he becomes attractive to me, where I go and seek him out, or he can rewire my brain so I know immediately to go the other direction. And what God is saying is, as we go through our lives, we need to begin to rewire the people's brains around us to become attractive people, to be people that, that come toward us because their brains immediately recognize, if I go towards Joel, I'm going to be encouraged. And then... That's, and that's just the physical thing. Like, Kevin, that's just psychology. That's just like books. I can just read that. But there's a whole other element here. There's a spiritual element that, that takes that and puts it on jet fuel. That takes us to a whole new level of living. If we, can, if we can just access that, we begin by just practicing that when John Day is walking around the lobby, everybody today, this is what we're going to, we're going to rewire John's brain today. We can do a whole experiment. Joe, you can write an article, sell a book, whatever you want to do. Bro, it's all you. You get the copyright. We're going to all encourage John Day today and say, John, that was some phenomenal worship today. That word you spoke in the middle of that song was fantastic. By the time he leaves here, he will feel like a different person when he leaves. Why? Because we've all done what God created us to do, and we've encouraged him with our voices, and it's rewired his brain to believe that he is more of God who says he can be. And that's not even spiritual yet. We're just on the ground level. But if you, if you don't do it, and you just go, oh, I, I believe that, then John's brain stays the same and nothing changes. But if we begin to speak it, if we begin to actually believe it and then act on it, then John's brains get changed. But again, that's only the, that's only the what I can do without God because God created me how he created me wave. But I want the bigger wave. I want the Holy Spirit wave. I want the spiritual component. I want all of what God has for me. So I need to connect back what I've separated. I've taken a principle of God and I've put it under my arm and I've walked away with it and said, God, I've got this. I can do this without you. But now I need to go back. I need to reconnect the principle of God with the person of God. I need to connect with the Holy Spirit on the inside of me because the Bible says that he who's within me is greater than he who's in the world. And the power that's on the inside of me is the same power that raised Christ from the dead. Like the same power that raised a dead man to life is on the inside of me waiting to encourage Andrea. So why would I not become the person God's created me to be and, and take what I've been given? And Pastor Phil said, it's like a weapon. I've got a power within me to encourage people in a way that will transform their lives, not like one little rewire, like a whole new connection to their brain. Because it won't be me speaking anymore. It'll actually be God speaking the encouragement. I practice in my own, because it, it takes me a minute. Like, I, I, my, I, by default, I'm, I'm gonna say I'm a little bit cynical, Troy. I don't know if you know that about me or not. I'm a little cynical. Like, I have to rewire my brain for positivity. I have to rewire my brain for encouragement. I have to rewire my brain when I get up. When I get up, I go, whew. Like, the, the, just the way I am, the day falls on me. I'm not like Rachel Hannah. I don't wake up like, oh, it's another day. I get, to, I, get to, I get to be alive today. It's gonna be awesome. I don't have that. See, she's laughing. She knows. She's like, yeah, that's exactly how I wake up. She doesn't need coffee. She just likes coffee. I need coffee. I don't even like it that much. So I have to start rewiring my brain. And when I get up in the morning going, come on, it's going to be a good day today. That's not even the Holy Spirit. That's just me. It's going to be a good day today. Then I open my one-year Bible and I read. Why? Because now I need God to start rewiring my brain. I need start God to start doing what he does because what I do, it'll get me so far, but it won't get me to where God has for me to go. And I'm trying every day, trying every day, trying every day to lift up my eyes and believe what he says about me is true. If I just believe what I say about me, it's not, I'm going to be on antidepressants soon. It's not going to be that good. And, and that, listen, if you're on antidepressants, it's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm just saying that, that, that medicating yourself isn't probably the answer for you. It's just a step in that direction. And I want to give you an answer that provides healing. And, and, and whatever you need to do to get yourself back to stable so that you can begin to access the power of God on the inside of you, then do it because it's gonna be worth it. Whatever you need to do to get help, that's why we have connect groups. It's not just because you don't have anything to do, it's because when you surround yourself with people and put yourself in an environment of people who believe in you because God created you, what you're gonna find is that environment begins to lift your eyes. You surround yourself with enough Joel links and your eyes are lifted all the time and you begin to rise to a new level of anointing. My first boss told me, he was, he's a, a really wealthy guy, he said, Jeff, if you wanna be a millionaire, surround yourself with millionaires. 
said, if you want to be rich, just hang around rich people all the time because they will rise your tide. If you want to be a person of faith, if you want to be a person who believes that what God says about them is true and you're living full life in Jesus, surround yourself with people who are living full life in Jesus because they will begin to raise the tide for you. So as we begin just speaking encouragement out to people, say, hey, Christian, man, you're a, you're a great man. Man, you, I'm so proud of you. Man, you've got a great family. You've got a great marriage. Man, you've got a job. It's just crazy. Like, man, I'm so proud of you. Just little encouragements. Not even Holy Spirit, just little encouragements. Yeah. Then I begin to read my Bible, and I begin to pray, and I begin to surround myself with other people who are doing the same thing. And then as I begin encouraging, I'm telling you, if you'll take time to breathe, you will find that words of encouragement drop into your spirit. Words of strength drop into you, and you'll go, I, I don't know what it is. That, that's how I almost start all my messages, Carlos, when I'm giving people a word of prophecy. I'm like, I don't, know, I don't know what this means, but I feel like God has said to me, because literally that's how I feel. I go, I know, Carlos, I know what's going on, but I don't know how I got this. Like, I don't know where this is coming from, and it feels awkward for me to say it to him and say it's for me because I don't feel like it is for me. I feel like God just, when I was reading today, I was reading this word. I got one for Devin and Shrifa a little while ago. In fact, I haven't given it to them yet, and I was reading Psalms. Because sometimes when you've got nothing to do, you just go back to the Psalms and you just start reading it. And man, it's great because he's like high, low. It's just like in my life. He's like, I'm angry, I'm happy, I'm worshiping, I'm crying. I don't know what's going on, but I'm just going back and forth with God. And Psalm 1, man, I love, don't, don't think you've got to like get to the most complicated things. Just go back to the beginnings. And Psalm 1 says, I, I, don't, I don't have it memorized, but it says, those who meditate on my word day and night, will become like trees planted by the water and will bear their fruit in season. That's the word that got, when I was, when I was reading that, Devin and Shreefa just popped in my mind. Wow. We've never had a meal. We've never hung out together. We've never played golf together. I don't know if you play golf. I bet Shreefa probably doesn't play golf. But, so I don't know where that came from. And if I would walk up to them and say, hey, I feel like you guys are just, you guys are guy, kind of guys who meditate on the word of God day and night and you're like trees planted by a brook. They're gonna go, that guy's weird. Like, he's, he's kind of, every time we talk to him, he's really funky. But I would say, hey, you guys are awesome. And I just wanted you to know, I was reading Psalms the other day, and, and when I was reading this, you popped into my head, and I haven't been able to get out of my head since. So let me just tell you, and if it resonates with you, and, and, and 2 Thessalonians, Paul says, hey, listen, when someone gives you a word, a prophecy, just test it. Make sure it's scriptural. Make sure it works. Because not everyone's perfect. Like, I know you are, but not everyone is. So, so just make sure it's good, because some people are going to make mistakes as they go but encourage them. See that word I just gave to Devin and Sharifa? That was nothing magical. I was just reading my Bible, they popped it in my head and I shared it with them, but it encourages them. Yeah. And I don't know if it comforts them, I don't know if they were really worried about anything, but it strengthens them too. So it meets the criteria and I just begin to speak it. But when we begin to live in that world, it's not just about, oh, I'm at church today, so can I find someone to profit? No, 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 it's like God saying, there's a lost world out there full of my children the people that I created and I value very much. And you keep asking me to save them. You keep asking me to bring them hope. You keep asking me to help them in their circumstance. And I need you to open your ears and open your eyes this morning and realize that's why you're there. That's why you're, that's why you're in their world. So when you go in their world next time, would you just begin to encourage them? Like start off with simple things. I, Nice polo, Troy. It's easy for me to say nice shirt to be with polos on because I love polos. It's like my love language. <laughs> but that's not like spiritual encouragement. I'm just going to start rewriting my brain to become a person of encouragement. And then I'm going to open up my heart to the things of God. So I'm just taking my natural encouragement and I'm taking what I know to be the word of God and I'm just beginning to pull them together. I'm like, I'm really, I'm a little bit like Doc Brown. I'm a little bit, I'm just, I'm, I'm out there in the middle of the, I'm all by myself in the middle of the thing, and I'm just like, the lightning's gonna strike pretty soon, and I'm just gonna put these two chords together. I don't know what's gonna happen, but when it happens, Andreas DeLorean's gonna speed off into the future, or past, or wherever it is, I don't know. There's a miracle on the inside of you. There's a miracle. God says that, that, the church is the body of Christ, right. and he fills it. You are the temple. Your body was created this way. He wired you all these ways I'm telling you. Your body is the temple of the living God, and he desires to fill you so that you can be a hope to every single person you meet. 
So I'm going to ask you, I'm, I'm running out of time. I could preach this to you for forever. I've got so many more scriptures here. I've got so many more words for people. But I, I just need to, I need you to walk away with something I never got when I was at a different church. And I think it's part of our, our culture here. I need you to walk away feeling empowered. I need you to walk away feeling equipped. I need you to walk away feeling, and this is, this is, um, this is key. I need you to walk away feeling switched on because if God is willing and God is able then we're just waiting on our ears to unclog to hear what he has for us so I'm going to ask you today Bible says that that he that God responds to faith that that it's faith that pleases God so I I know how it is I know what this looks like I'm going to ask you to step into this idea that you were created for this purpose to speak to people and when you speak you the words come out of your mouth, but when it hits their head, they're hearing God. It, it, it's, it, it's a mystery I don't understand, but it's possible, and it happens all the time. And I want you to step into it today because the promise is for you. Paul says, I desire for you to be filled with these gifts, but especially to prophesy. This is the Apostle Paul, the greatest man outside of Jesus who probably ever ministered on this earth. And he's saying, church, the most important thing you can know is that these gifts are available to you. And there's lots of them. There's like, some people think there's seven, some people think there's 17, some people think there's 77. I, I don't know, but here's the thing, especially prophecy. Especially your speaking words inspired by God to comfort, to encourage, and to strengthen other people. So I'm gonna ask you two questions, then I'm gonna ask you to respond. I don't have much more time, so I just need to, I need to go. I'm gonna ask you two questions. First question is, do you believe that God is able? Like, really believe it. Do you believe that God is able to inspire you with a word for a friend? That God's able to, to get into your mind? If Joel Link can get into my head and rewire my brain, is it possible that the God who said, let there be light in every star in the sky that's beyond every measure of counting that we have, if he can do that with a word, can he get in, into my head an encouragement, a strengthening, a comfort for someone I'm going to encounter today? Is that possible with God? I need you to respond like you're on the plane at the exit row seat. I need you to verbally respond. Do you believe it? Yes. All right. That's good. That's one. Now I got a second question for you. Now, now listen, if he's able to do all that, do you believe that you are who he says that you are? I'm not asking you if you feel like it today. I'm not asking you if you think you can step right into it. I'm not asking you if you feel like you can prophesy over the whole church. I'm just saying, if he is that person and you are who he says that you are, do you feel like if you focus your life in this direction, if you raise your hand and say, that's me, and you begin to, 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 to make an effort in this direction, do you believe that he might speak through you? Do you believe that's possible? All right, if that's you, if that's you and you want it, because here's the thing, you may go, I believe it's possible and I believe that, that he can do it, but I don't know if I want that. Yeah. There, there's a whole bunch of people out there like that. That's okay. Hey, God has grace. It took me 20 years. God has grace. But if that's you today, I want to switch you on today. And, and this, isn't, this isn't like if you've never done this before. This is like if you want another level of this gifting because <laughs> no one's arrived. Like, if that's you today, would you just stand up so I can pray for you? Just right where you're sitting, stand up. You don't have to stand up. But if you want to be that person that's empowered by God to encourage, strengthen, and comfort everyone around you, I just want you to stand up. I'm just going to pray for you. That's all I'm going to do. I'm not going to freak you out. I'm not going to ask you to do some kind of routine. I'm just going to pray for you. You don't even have to repeat after me. Are you ready? All right, so just close your eyes. And this is just for me because I like to get out of my head a little bit. This isn't for you to poke your spouse. This isn't for your kids. This isn't a moment for you to think about someone else. No matter where you are, no matter what you've done, no matter what you think, this is for you today. So focus on you. Just take a deep breath in, because you're wired this way, and just deep breath out. Reset your mind. We're not in the busyness anymore. We're just going to take two minutes, and we're going to ask God to touch us. I'm going to pray, and I want you to non-verbally respond. Just in your head, just agree with me. Make this your prayer as I pray. You don't have to repeat your, in your head. You just have to agree with me, and we're going to pray this together.
God, we're so thankful. Your word says that we can enter into your course with thanksgiving, that we can enter in with praise. And so, God, we begin with that. God, if you never did anything else in our lives, God, you've gotten us to this place, and that was far farther than we ever deserved. So, God, thank you for all you've already done. God, but we can't stop here because we believe that you created us for more because that's what you told us. And God, we don't feel willing, we don't feel worthy. God, we don't feel capable. God, we don't have it all together yet. But we're not waiting to have it together. God, we're waiting on you right now. If you can create all those stars with a single word, then surely you can do it with us, God. Surely you can equip us. Surely you can empower us. Surely you can allow your Holy Spirit to do whatever he needs to do to transform us into the person that you created us to be. If Joel can rewire our brain, God, how much more then? So God, we take that little bit of faith that we have, God, and we lift it up to you. And we ask you right now, touch us. Revive us again. Allow us to believe that you are who you say that you are. God, and then give us the boldness. Give us the strength. God, give us the courage this week to speak those words of encouragement. Give us the boldness this week to speak those words of comfort. God, give us the boldness this week to begin to speak words of strength where we don't see any possibility of strength. We just see a possibility for you, God. Convince us today that if we'll step out on these waters, God, you'll carry us the rest of the way. Father, we thank you for who you are. God, we thank you for all you've already done. And as all these people standing here, God, with hearts lifted to you, ask you for this gift of the Holy Spirit. Father, I pray right now in Jesus' name that every person be filled from the very front to the very back. God, no matter how they feel, no matter what they think, God, that you would supernaturally move in their world and begin, God, to transform their lives into beacons of hope, begin to transform their hearts, God, into beacons of light in everywhere they set their foot, God, begin to transform their very worlds, God, into worlds full of love for all of your people, those who are close and those who are still far away, Father, they would begin to speak encouragement, comfort, and strength and with every voice, with every word, in Jesus' mighty name, God, we rely on you. God, we ask you, and by your son, Father, we ask it would be done in his name. Amen.